Brilliant. Okay, right. Oh, it's warm, isn't it? I'm going to go for a bottle. Who's the warmest? <laughs> Me. <laughs> I'm going for a bottle of water. Right, evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, there we are. We are still awake. Jolly good. Um, so uh, let me start with a little introduction for those that don't know me. Hello. <laughs> My name is Gavin Hoey. I'm a full-time photographic educator and a full-time photographer. And I spend a lot of my time actually doing the education side of things. So if the voice or the face looks vaguely familiar, you may have YouTubed a video. I may well have come up if you put the word photography into YouTube. But I've been making videos about Photoshop for the last 15 years uh, for various magazines, websites, and what have you. So uh, I spent a lot of my time doing Photoshop stuff. Let's make that a bit bigger. Let's, let's see. There we go. I don't have 10,000 followers on my Instagram account, and because I put it right at the bottom, I won't get any more either. So, uh, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, I'd like to thank Adobe for allowing me to come and uh, speak tonight and give you a few thoughts for the next 20 minutes or so about Photoshop CC 2015.5. So my little bit here is more demo of some of the features, but it's the features that I actually use, the new stuff that's made a difference to my workflow. Now, although I use Lightroom a lot in my work, in my professional work, if I looked at the hours that I actually put into my photography, I spend way more hours actually inside of Photoshop, just fine-tuning and adjusting, although I put way more pictures through Lightroom. So I use both bits of software, but tonight I am just talking about the Photoshop side of things. OK, so let's come out of that and get cracking. So I've got a bunch of pictures to go through. Um, what I would like to say is all of the pictures you're going to see are my own shots. And uh, there's no ironing board pictures in my shots. So I've never done that. That sounds fun. I'm going to try that. Um, what I do have are a bunch of pictures that need a bit of work. Now, I'd like to make this absolutely clear. Although I'm showing you lots of pictures with faults, I'm not really that bad a photographer. Okay, I'm just showing you the ones that need some work. Normally, my pictures aren't that terrible. They, they kind of work straight out the box. So let's dive straight in. One of the new features that's really made my life a little bit easier, a little bit quicker, saved me some time, I'll be honest, I use it quite a lot, is the new improvements to the crop tool. Now, earlier on, Richard showed you some, some cropping and some content-aware cropping. So we're going to briefly recap that. And then I'm going to try and up the ante a bit, because we didn't know that was going to happen. So I'm going to try and outdo him, do like a bit of competition. So I've got a picture here. Um, you might be able to see that there is a, a problem with this picture. Can you see the problem? Yeah, they built the town wonky, didn't they? Now, two things have happened. Either the town is wonky, or the tree is wonky. I'm going to say, because I photographed it like this, it's the town that's wonky. You may disagree. You may be right. So what I need to do is straighten up this image. Now, to straighten it up, like everything in Photoshop, there are a dozen ways of getting to the same end result. But I've always used the crop tool for straightening up, simply because it's so simple and effective. So what I can do is I can just come to a corner and do a quick rotate. But if I rotate around, you can see the problem. I'm going to lose large bits of my image. They're going to disappear. And if I actually crop that down, the bit I lose is the bit I really wanted, which is the tree over here. I've lost the tree over on the side. I really wanted that tree. That tree was a stopping point. It was a visual end to the photograph. So I want to do something to keep that tree in my shot. The only difference I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the top. And I'm going to turn on the new Content Aware option. So it's on the Options bar, brand new in Photoshop CC 2015.5. If I do exactly the same crop, you'll notice how this time it's a little bit different. This time, rather than cropping into the picture and losing some of the really important stuff around the edge, it's kept the edges, more or less. It's kept the tree on the right-hand side, but it's given me corners. It's given me these triangle areas here, which is going to have to fill in. And that's where the content aware bit really comes in. I'm just going to uh, click on the tick. And I'll make that happen. Now, 
It doesn't have a library of trees to fill this in with. It doesn't have access to Adobe stock to go and find a suitable autumn tree to fill in. It has to use what's in the picture. And it's done a really good job. I mean, that is pretty good. If I undo it and go back, you know, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. It looks like I've rotated it and haven't lost anything. Here's the thing. That's quite an easy one to do. If I was sat where you are and I watched that demonstration, I'd think, yeah, that's pretty good. But come on, Gavin, look. It's trees. It's leaves. They're easy. That You could clone that in. That's not much of a challenge. I'll be honest, that was the only one I was going to do tonight. I was going to stop there. And then Richard did his. OK, Richard, let's see if I can outdo you. So let's find a harder image. This is a harder image to do. This image needs rotating. Uh, this image, I had my camera on a camera bag just resting on the floor. That's my excuse for it being wobbly and all out of alignment. So I'm going to rotate this around. I've still got content aware crop turned on. But not only am I going to do that, I'm going to make it even harder for myself. I'm actually going to increase the area by dragging out those crop handles. So I keep every single bit of this image. Everything like that. Now, there is a lot of stuff that Photoshop has to create from scratch. And this time, it's not nice, easy leaves. This time, it's man-made. Man-made stuff to fill in. It needs to know that this wagon, it needs to go up at an angle. It needs to know it's got a, a, a green door on the end of it. It's got to know that over here, there is a bit that needs to extend with correct perspective. Yep, there's some sky to fill in and some grass to fill in. This is a real challenge. I would not normally have done this until we've had the new updates with the new improved content aware algorithm. It's not going to be perfect. In fact, I've no idea how good or bad this is going to be, because it does vary every time you do it. But that's not bad. That's pretty good. It's built the carriage. It's added the door at the side. It's extended this area over here. OK, that's, that's pretty good. It's not perfect. If you, when you start looking closely, you can see the clouds are repeating. OK, so we can just get the, the spot healing brush. But how quick was that compared to having to clone? If, if you ever tried to clone something with perspective, it's really challenging. So big thumbs up. I reckon that's outdone Mr. Curtis. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> OK, let's close that down. Let's do something completely different. So uh, another new feature is actually a feature that's not new. It's gone. It's disappeared, something that's vanished. So this was a shoot I was on, and I had this idea in my head. We were going to do a lovely floaty shot in the woods. I had the blue dress, and I had some blue material. At least I thought it was blue until I got on location, and I realized it wasn't blue at all. It was actually slightly purpley blue. And when I photographed it, it came out even more purple. Your screen is actually doing a better job of it than my screen, which is kind of quite flattering. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the quick selection tool, make a very quick selection over this really badly. Here we go. And let's do the best I can, something like that. Do, 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 done. OK, now, at this point, I would normally go to Refine Edge, which is at the top. Except Refine Edge isn't there. It's gone. So that got me confused when I first launched 2015.5. Instead, it's actually now Select and Mask. So if you liked Refine Edge before, it's now under Select and Mask. Notice the dots, dot, dot, dot. Those little dots actually mean something. Anywhere inside of Photoshop where you see three little dots, for example, if I go to the blur, here we go, look. We've got uh, Gaussian blur, dot, dot, dot. Those three little dots mean that when you click on that option, another box is going to pop up. It's not the end of the process. And in this case, when I click on Select and Mask, I'll go to the Select and Mask workspace. This is Refine Edge, but Refine Edge with all of the things that I wish I had when I used to have Refine Edge. Because you may have noticed I've missed a chunk out the side here. OK, that's not a problem, because now I can come up and choose Quick Selection Tool. How many times have I gone to Refine Edge only to realize I've got my selection a bit wrong, but only after I've worked halfway around the image? It's driven me nuts for years. I've also managed to select her arm, which I didn't really want, because I don't want to change the color of her arm. I want to change the color of the, uh, the, 
the material. So let's go in here, and I can use the quick selection in the minus mode, and I can just take away. There we go. And we can just tidy that up. Now, with a bit of time, I would get a much better selection. But time is ticking down, and it's the one thing I don't have enough of. OK, that's fine. Um, let's see what else we've got here. We have the uh, Refine Edge brush. So the Refine Edge brush is still here. It's just got a new icon. And again, a little bit of time I could do better with that, but that'll do for now. Then you just have an ordinary brush. You just have a brush if you want to paint bits in or paint bits away. Fantastic. There we go. And it's a brush, which means you get all of the usual brush settings there as well. There's a lasso tool, so if you want to just quickly sort of add a bit or take a bit away, you can go and do that as well. OK, that's fine. Um, one thing I will draw your attention to is the right-hand side, where we have a new overlay or view mode of onion skin. But I particularly like the transparency. I can actually change the transparency to make my selections a bit easier to see what's there and what's missing. That's a really, really neat feature. So happy with that. Uh, you've got your usual things. If you want to do edge detection, you can, of course. If you want to do your global refinement, smoothing, feathering, they're all there. Basically, this workspace takes all of the important selection tools, puts them in one place. Boy, is that so much easier to use. Uh, I can decontaminate colors. I always recommend that, because when you decontaminate colors, you make a layer mask, which is really useful. Because we all work non-destructively, don't we? Do we all use smart objects? Wow, that was, that was stunning, that was, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, we all know we should work non-destructively. Let's leave it at that. Okay. Yeah, I'm the same. I don't always work non-destructively. For example, if I want to change the color, I might just grab myself the hue and saturation, and we can just change the color and try and match it. And because I've gone through the trouble of masking that out, I can get a color that kind of reasonably closely matches what she's wearing. Yeah, there you go. That'll do quite nicely. OK. Now, you may have noticed there is an interloper in my shot. Ah. How do these magical shots happen? Well, they don't happen with a wind machine, because otherwise her hair would go everywhere and look really uncontrolled. What they happen with is an assistant going, yeah, got it, and then running out of the scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my assistant using the healing brush. I absolutely love the new healing brush. The new healing brush, it adjusts it as it goes. It's superb. If you've not played with the new improved algorithm in the healing brush, it's so much better than it used to be, way better than it was before. However, I do understand there are a few photographers who don't like change. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm one of them, more often than not. But that's a change I like. If you want the old healing brush back, one of the new features in CC 2015.5 is down under Edit, Preferences, Tools, because I'm using a PC, using a Microsoft Surface Book. If you're a Mac user, it's under Photoshop, Preferences, Tools. And when you go in there, if you want the old algorithm back for the healing brush, you can now restore the old algorithm if that's what you really want. OK, let's close that down. OK, so we've got uh, two more or so to go. Let's grab this one. This is one of my favorite things to do. I love, love doing panoramas. It's kind of like a personal project for me. I've done panoramas all over the world. Anytime I'm just standing there thinking, eh, what can I photograph now? Because I do photography for a living, but also a hobby, I'll do a panorama. And now I can actually do panoramas right here in Adobe Camera Raw. So for those that aren't familiar, this is Adobe Camera Raw. This is very similar to the Lightroom Develop module. The only difference is the interface, the layout. And if I want to go and find my panoramas, they're hidden. Hidden underneath these four little lines. Whenever you see these four little lines, that's Adobe telling you, here's the good stuff that we've hidden. OK, so when you see that, four little lines, sometimes four spots, four lines, click on it, because that's where the good stuff is. Now, if I go to Merge Panorama, you can see, no matter how many times I click it, it ain't going to work, because it's grayed out. You have to have at least two images selected. I'm just going to select all of mine, and now I can merge to Panorama. Now, bearing in mind I've got five high-resolution images to merge together, 
And I'm using a reasonably powerful laptop. It's an i7 with 16 gig of RAM, so it's, it's not too bad. That was pretty quick. However, you'll notice I've managed to lop off the top of the flat iron building here in New York. Or have I? Let's turn off auto crop. No, I haven't. I've got it. It's just auto crop has cropped it off. Now, of course, we could use content aware fill inside of Photoshop to fill in that checkerboard pattern. I'm not going to try that tonight. That's maybe a step too far for a live demonstration. I'm pushing my luck with the last one. But what I will do is use the new boundary warp. Boundary warp allows me to warp the edges. So I can just sort of bend this around. I can make it fit in. Bend. Now, I don't need to bend it all the way. If I turn on auto crop, I only need to bend it that much, really, don't I? That, that's plenty. And then I'll click on merge. I need to save it as a, a new file, so I'll just save it in the same location. Now, it does take a moment for this to process. It looks OK, but it is processing away. You can see a little blue line. If you can see the bottom corner of my screen, there's a small blue line just indicating it's doing a bit of thinking, boom, and it's finished thinking. That image is now 77 million pixels. OK, I don't have a 77 million pixel camera. <laughs> uh, that's why I like doing panoramas. I'll just click on the Auto button. Have a look at the amazing amount of detail that you get from 77 million pixels. It's absolutely stunning. Look, there's even a guy with a tripod. <laughs> well done. Why didn't I have a tripod? It would have saved me a lot of trouble doing this, I tell you, if I'd have taken a tripod. <laughs> there you go. So absolutely wonderful. Now, you can see that the buildings are leaning in. Now, we could try and fix it here in RAW, but on a super wide shot like this, a sort of almost fisheye shot, I would do that inside of Photoshop. But what I would do is if I wanted to do a, fish, a shot in RAW that needs adjusting, I would do it on a single image rather than a really wide one. And I would do it by coming over here and saying, well, let's go to Lens Corrections and using the Transform tools in Lens Corrections, which are found under Manual. Huh. Except they're not. They've gone. But Adobe, brilliant. You can't fault Adobe for moving stuff and giving you a sign. It says, look here, Upright has moved. <laughs> OK, the new transform tool is where I find my stuff. The new transform tool is over here. Here's a little kind of secret thing. Not only have they written it down for you, if you click on the words, it brings up another box that if you say yes, it selects the tool for you. <laughs> Be honest to Adobe, that is going the extra mile. It really is. They didn't have to do that. Thank you, Adobe. That's great. OK, so the transform tool. Transform tool will help me straighten things up. I can fix my, my verticals just by clicking on the vertical button. Brilliant. As Richard showed you earlier, and I won't dwell on it, I can also use the, the guided version of the same tool, just sort of drag down. And you need two of these. It took me a while to figure that out. It does have written instructions on the right-hand side. But being a man, I've never read them. So you can either do it manually, or you can do it the auto way. Either way, whatever works for you, it's lovely to have options. OK, I've got just a couple of minutes left. Last one. I've saved my favorite to last. And I know Richard showed this, and I know why he showed it, because this is just one of the best things I've seen in such a long time. It's a very powerful feature for anybody who does portraits. Somebody famous once said, with great power comes great responsibility. I think it was something in Spider-Man, something really deep. So with great responsibility, I'm going to edit this guy, because this is Roger. Roger came into my studio to do a video shoot, and we did a, a video challenge. I had a makeup artist, and I challenged the makeup artist to do better bruising than me in Photoshop. He's a boxer, by the way. He was, he was all done up as a boxer. You can't see the rest, but he was a, uh, set up to be a boxer. So the makeup artist, absolutely fantastic. My Photoshop, not bad. But in the time it took the makeup artist to do the makeup, I only did one image in Photoshop. And of course, with makeup, you can just keep shooting and shooting. However, what the makeup artist couldn't do was add swelling to his face, make it look like he's actually been in a fight. But you can do that with Liquify. So I'm going to go to Filter and liquefy. So you have all your usual tools, but it's the new facial tool that I like. The face tool is absolutely brilliant. 
Uh, let's just zoom in a bit, because of course it really is the face you want to see. OK. Face tool, you can do it in two ways. You can either hover over the individual areas and drag them. I like to use the interface on the right-hand side, because it slows me down. It, it means I have a little bit more of a think about these things, which is a good thing. You need to think about what you're doing to your models. Really important. Um, eyes, let's start with eyes. So there are a bunch of things I can do. I can make his eyes um, <clears throat> bigger, OK? <laughs> which is really weird. Uh, I can um, change the width of his eyes. I can make them wider. Uh, I can change the distance between his eyes. <laughs> Whoa. It's just freaky, isn't it? Don't, don't do that. That's not good. Now, first thing you're going to notice is when I do this, can you see it affects both eyes the same? So that's something to bear in mind. If you only want to make one eye move a little bit, think smart objects. We could do smart objects. We really don't have time tonight. But smart objects are the way to go if you want to do that. I don't want to change his eyes. I think his eyes are fine. But if he was a boxer, his nose would definitely be different. OK, so first of all, I can change the nose height. So I can make him snarl. That's, that's pretty good, isn't it? That's not bad. Um, you'll never meet a boxer with a nice, pointy nose. They don't have them. That's, that's not how it goes. Uh, Roger, Roger isn't a boxer, I should say. He's a fireman. He's, he's a really nice bloke. Um, so we need to make his nose a little bit wider. So I can change the width of his nose to make it just a little bit wider out. Uh, mouth, mouth. OK, so I, I can make him smile. Oh, boy. <laughs> I, used to do, I used to do family photos, and sometimes trying to get the kids to smile, always uh, kind of challenging. Um, Roger is the nicest, happiest person I've ever met. Honestly, we spent the entire shoot saying, Roger, don't smile. Roger, don't smile. So I can actually make him frown, which is kind of good. Um, it's just, OK. We can make the upper lip kind of curl a little bit, OK? Uh, we can make the lower lip a little bit thinner or fatter. He's going to have a fat lip, isn't he? He's got a little bit of bruising down there. Uh, mouth width, I don't think I need to make it wider. It's OK. The one that really gets me, mouth height. OK, so we can make his mouth height go bigger and smaller. <laughs> and um, we, we can kind of animate this, which is really freaky. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that, that's kind of fun. So we'll, we'll, we leave that alone. That's fine. Uh, then there's just a general face shape. I can change his forehead. Uh, I can uh, do his chin. We can make it, um, we'll make it a bit lower. Uh, we can make his jawline a bit wider, because he may be a little bit puffy post-fight, uh, and just you know, general width and so on. So there's all sorts of things you can do to faces. It really is quite stunning how amazingly targeted it is. But of course, you've still got the other tools as well. So if you want to come and do a little bit of kind of bloating there, just to really make that more bruisy, give the bloat tool on there and give him a fat lip. There you go. OK, done. OK, so you can change faces quite a bit. Remember, if you're doing this, if you're a portrait photographer, use this power responsibly. <laughs> You've been warned. OK, that brings me very neatly to the end of my time. Um, hopefully, you found some of these things useful. Uh, there is a whole raft of new features inside of Photoshop CC 2015.5, and new things appear constantly inside of Photoshop. It's well worth keeping up to date with the Adobe blogs on what's new and what's coming out, because you never know what you can find in there that will really improve your photography and workflow. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.